Can I welcome you? Good morning, everyone. Morning. Can, can everybody hear? We haven't got loudspeakers. There are speakers across there if needed. But if we speak up, perhaps we don't. Um, it'll um, perhaps speed things up if we speak clearly and briefly. We'll get through the agenda because the agenda is relatively light. So, um, the, can I just quote that there is no emergency drills are planned. In the event of a fire or emer emergency, the alarm bell, bell will ring continuously. You should vacate the building <coughs> in an orderly manner through the nearest available exit. Um, and as, um, assemble at the, in the car park opposite. I'm reading out the uh, observations for the uh, Plough Lane, but they were applied here. Please ask, if there, you can record this meeting, please can I ask that the live stream and a started and verbal confirmation is provided with we are broadcasting. Mr. Chairman, I can confirm that we are recording. Right. Welcome to this meeting of the Planning and Regulatory Committee. The agenda, papers and other relevant information for this meeting are available for the public viewing on the Herefordshire Council website. Please remember that your words and actions should be chosen carefully and members are reminded that speeches are limited to three minutes. The Council is streaming this meeting live on the Herefordshire Council U um, YouTube. I nearly said U YouTube. Um, uh, uh, and making a recording. The recording is available via the Council's website shortly after the meeting has been concluded. Other attendees are permitted to film, photograph and record the meeting provided that it does not disrupt the business of the meeting. If you do not wish to be filmed or photographed, please identify yourself so, so, so that anyone who intends to record the meeting can be made aware. To, be sh to ensure that the recording quality is maintained, could members speak as clearly as possible and keep background noise to a minimum, ensure that mobile phones are, and, and other devices are turned to silent. Welcome to those in attendance. I now ask Mr Banks to introduce the officers. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Um, Mr. Bishop's uh, attending today, but uh, has passed the reins over to me to uh, help with the meeting. Um, so the officers that are speaking today are Gemma Webster. She will be um, presenting item six. Uh, Kelly Gibbons, who sat over there, she'll be uh, presenting item seven. Item eight has been deferred from the agenda uh, and will be reported back to you at a future meeting. Um, Cam Rupra was the case officer for item nine. She's not available today, so you'll have the pleasure of a presentation from me for item nine. Uh, my name's Andrew Banks, and I'm the development manager for the Northern area. We also have um, Kerry Munro with us today. She's uh, online uh, and will be providing uh, legal advice to the meeting today. Thank you, Chair. Katie Jones. Oh, sorry, and Katie Jones from Highways as well. Thank you. We number item one, apologies for absence. We have received apologies from Councillor Watson. Local members, Councillor Swinglehurst Simmons and Graham Jones have provided apologies. Name substitutes. There are no substitutes. Declarations of interest. Can any member wishes to declare an in, uh, interest in any of the items, please declare. There are no declarations. Can I now move on to the minutes of the meeting on the 23rd of November, 2022? No matters of accuracy have been notified to the monitoring officer. Can I ask whether the minutes of the meeting of the 22nd of November are approved? Please indicate by raising your hands. That's agreed. Okay, that's agreed. Was there an abstention? Yeah, it's, yeah, the, due to the case, but then someone not there. Can I say there are no cha uh, chairman's um, uh, um, announcements other than to, to confirm what Councillor uh, Mr. Banks actually said that item eight has been uh, with deferred to a, a prior meeting. 
Can I now request that public speakers present in person for the agenda item six join the meeting? Mrs. Bowton, <coughs> if you could take your seat at the uh, there, where there, there is a, I think there is a microphone there. Good morning, and can I welcome you to the meeting? And we'll call you to speak when the officer has completed their presentation. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move on to our officer for this particular item, who is Gemma Witt. If you could now make your presentation. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, members. I refer to the update sheet where two further representations were received in support of the application and detailed in regards to ongoing concerns regarding the access over the common land. The applicant will need to apply separately via Section 38 consent in accordance with the Commons Act 2006 for the access to be domestic access rather than an agricultural access. A planning permission will not override this requirement. I refer committee members to the comments received by the Commons Officer in paragraph 4.5 of the Officer's Report and further details in paragraph 6.33 of the report. There is no change to the officer's recommendation. The site is located within the settlement of Welsh Newton Common, shown by the red star on the map. Welsh Newton Common is identified within the call strategy, policy RA2, as a smaller settlement where proportionate housing will be appropriate. The site is not located within an AOMB, nor is it in a conservation area. There are no listed buildings within the immediate vicinity. There are no designations on the site. The proposal seeks full planning permission for the construction of two detached one and a half storey three bedroom properties, utilising the existing access into the field. The site already benefits from the approval of two dwellings of the same design and scale. The difference in this proposal is that the access is proposed to come from the existing access of the field to the east of the site, rather than a new access being created in the hedgerow to the southeast, and the plots are rotated on the site to run in a north-south line rather than east-west. Next slide please. The application site comprises part of a field lying on the corner of St Walston's Road and a private street in the centre of Welsh Newton Common. The wider field benefits from two large beech trees and a field shelter. The road that runs along the southern boundary used to lead to a post office which is now closed. The area exhibits a degree of openness, providing a sparsely populated character and appearance to the site within a regular parent pattern of development. The site is located within the settlement boundary defined within the Welsh Newton and Ganaroo Neighbourhood Development Plan, which was made September 2019. NDP policy WNL5 states that proposals for new market housing will be supported within the identified settlement boundary in Welsh Newton Common. Next slide, please. The application site comprises the southwestern corner of the field with a proposed access utilising the existing access gateway into the field on the northeast corner, providing sufficient visibility slates in each direction, which seeks to improve the overall access arrangements by comparison to the previous approved site. The site is bounded by trees and hedgerows along the roadside. The site is a flat field currently used for grazing. The block plan shows the dwellings to be set back from the road with sufficient curtilage to maintain the character of the surrounding dwellings. Next slide, please. Policy WNL4 of the NDP states that care should be taken to ensure that buildings height, scale and form do not disrupt the visual amenities of the immediate surroundings, nor impact adversely on any significant wider landscape use. Building materials are encouraged to retain the character of the settlement and design should be informed by the distinctive local character of the rural area, which height should not exceed six metres. The dwellings proposed are of the same design as previously approved for the site. They will be detached one and a half storey, three bedroom properties with communal living space on the ground floor and bedrooms above. The ridge height for the properties is six metres. Both dwellings will be constructed for facing stonework on the front elevations with areas of render on the other elevations with natural slate roofs and aluminium timber windows. Plot one has 203 square metres of usable floor space and has an attached garage off the northeast elevation creating an L shape. Parking and turning will be to the front of the properties with private amenity space to the rear of both properties. Next slide, please. This plan shows the elevations for plot two, <clears throat> the southernmost plot of the two. This dwelling has a detached garage to the front of the property. The existing trees along the southern boundary adjacent to the roadside will be maintained. The tree officer has no objections to the scheme. The site itself does not benefit from any TPO. 
and the tree report submitted with the application details that all trees proposed are to be retained, including the two mature beech trees, which are near the existing access. New native hedgerow will be planted around the remainder boundaries to the north, east and west. The local authority area engineer has no objections to the proposals. The proposed use of the existing access to the field seeks to improve the overall access arrangements than the approved access to the southeast hedge line. Sufficient visibility space will be available at the access. In addition, sufficient on-site parking and turning will be provided to ensure vehicles enter and exit the site in a forward gear. To ensure the construction phase is suitably managed, a construction management plan is conditioned, which will need to include delivery routing and timing where possible to avoid natural peak flows in traffic flow. Next slide, please. As stated earlier, the site is located within the settlement boundary. NDB policy WNL5 states that proposals for new market housing will be supported within the identified settlement boundary of Welsh Newton Common. The policy further states that proposals should be small in scale for one or two properties and development should adjoin clusters of existing buildings and not be in isolated sites away from other housing. The proposals will be expected to demonstrate particular attention to form, layout, character and setting of the site and its location within Welsh Newton. New housing should be accessed directly from a made-up road. House sizes should be limited to a maximum of three bedrooms to help address local school shortage of smaller affordable units for young families. <clears throat> the proposals are to connect to a shared private treatment plant with associated groundwater soakaway drainage field, which is within the applicant's ownership. The HRA has concluded that there are no pathways for any remaining nutrients, including phosphates, to enter the River Wysak from the foul water surface water scheme as proposed. Natural England have also confirmed no objections to the proposal. The land drainage officers have concluded no objection to the proposals in their comments, stating that they do not object or have concerns in regard to the foul water drain strategy, providing a management plan is conditioned to outline responsibility in maintenance of the package treatment plant and drainage field. The local authorities of Cognis stated in his comments that nothing is differing in regards to the original ecological reports, the relevant mitigation and working methods were sufficiently thorough and detailed, with recommendations to be secured through conditions. The ecologists also stated that they welcome the amended access point, ensuring the existing hedgerow on the southeastern boundary is no longer lost to provide an access point. Next slide, please. These photographs show the internal area of the site with the proposed two dwellings utilised in the southwestern corner of the field. The remainder of the field maintains to be within the applicant's ownership. The property that can be seen beyond the boundary in the top left photograph is that of the adjacent property to the site, Steep Road. Next slide, please. This photograph is an image from the outside of the site, standing at the corner of St. Walston Road and the adjacent road running along the southern boundary of the site. The gateway shown at the corner is the existing gateway for the field and the proposed access. Next slide, please. These photographs show the existing gate access with the mature beech trees behind, looking towards the southwestern corner where the properties have been closed. The remaining two photographs show the visibility from the access in both directions. To conclude, the site is within the defined settlement boundary and within the main built-up area of the village. The site maintains the grain and character of the area and surrounding existing <coughs> Utilising the existing access will eliminate the need to remove the hedgerow and trees on the southeastern boundary, as approved in previous application. Additional native hedgerow planting will take place around the remainder of the site to provide further screening, mitigation and ecological benefits for the site. Overall, the proposal complies with planning policy and complies with the NDP policies with no technical objections and therefore officers are recommending approval. Thank you, members. And Chair, that concludes my presentation. Thank you, Mrs. Webster. <coughs> I'll now go to the speakers. Uh, a video has been provided by Mrs. Parkers speaking to in a rejection to the application. Please can this be played to the meeting? This video submission is in objection to planning application 22-2020. Local residents remain strongly opposed to this application for the following reasons. It is not in keeping with the neighbourhood development plan. It will have a negative impact on natural environment and biodiversity. It will have a negative impact on local infrastructure, especially roads and water supply. The forthcoming changes to the LDP will likely move Washington Common out of the RSU category and into the rural exceptions category where this location rightfully belongs. The NDP clearly states a preference for smaller, affordable houses which are underrepresented in the rural community. Like many other rural settlements, our village is in danger of becoming out of reach of people doing ordinary jobs on average wages. The planning system should do more to address this issue. The design of the proposals don't respect the vernacular architecture 
or the history of development on and around the common. The location will have a detrimental impact on the common land adjacent, where local people have open access for walking and general recreation. On the face of it, the change of this particular application might appear to be an improvement because it won't involve making a new entrance through a species rich hedge. The use of the existing gateway will, however, have an impact on the mature beech trees at the entrance to the field. The previous application for a larger number of houses was scaled back at the recommendation of the tree officer due to the unacceptable impact on the beech trees. The canopy will need to be raised to allow traffic, especially heavy loaders, to build new materials to pass beneath. In addition, there's concern about the roots of these mature trees. The current scruffy field hedges that are home to protected dormice will become domestic hedges. The residents are very likely to want to maintain the lady boundaries, cut the hedges back, remove the ivy, and make them less attractive to wildlife. Once the houses are occupied, there will be no control over the way they maintain their boundaries, and resident wildlife won't be protected. Local infrastructure is already stretched to breaking point. Local people have all commented in their objection that it's about the capacity of the narrow road to cope with additional traffic and the dangers this involves. We note the comments from Welsh Water on this application about the inadequacy of the water supply for the community. Following the freezing weather last month, we were entirely without any water, not even bottled water or a tank was supplied for three days. Local residents of the parish council have made representations to the county council about the RA2 housing category the Welsh Student Common has been placed in. There was no consultation about this, no choice was provided. It's clear to anybody visiting the village that it's not a sustainable location. There's no services, got poor infrastructure and sensitive environmental issues. Local residents welcome the fact that the LDP review appears to now understand that this was a mistake and opportunity should never have been allocated to the RA2 housing category. New housing here should be justified by need, for example, nearby employment or support family members. There's no justification in these terms for this planning application and it should be rejected. Thank you. Now, can I invite Mrs. <coughs> Mrs. Bowden, applicant, to speak in support of the application? Did you know that Booking.com does flights too? You mean you can buy a huge selection of flights along with a huge selection of accommodation? Uh, yeah, but when you spill test. There we are. <laughs> I don't know. I do hope that hasn't affected the balance of the debate this morning. <laughs> Mrs. Broughton, you have three minutes. I can just check this. Is this on? No, I don't. It doesn't sound like it. I'm pressing the button. It's usually at the top. I don't know. As you know, this committee has already given permission for two new houses on this site, and this is effectively a variation of that approval. Following approval, there was some disquiet amongst a group of objectors relating to the intended new approved access through a hedgerow off a stoned road on common land. It was also noted that the NDP steering group had a preference for new dwellings to be accessed via a tarmac road rather than a made-up road, though this is not in the adopted NDP. In January 2018, before submitting the first planning application on this site, I had a conversation with, with my ward councillor, Councillor Swinglehurst, in which she suggested that I should utilise the existing access rather than cre creating a new one. On the 29th of January 2018, I followed up this conversation with an email explaining why I didn't want to use the existing access. My primary concern was that I still needed to use this gateway to lead horses into the retained land adjacent to the development site, and it was unsafe to do so if I was likely to meet traffic using the access. Due to personal circumstances, this is no longer an issue. I have therefore decided to hold out an olive branch to the objectors by submitting this variation using the existing access. Unfortunately, my olive branch was rejected by a small number of the objectors, and these people have apparently been supported by Councillor Swinglehurst, who has brought this to committee, despite the fact that it was her idea in the first place. Not only was my olive branch rejected, it was also burnt. An objector at the parish council meeting falsely accused me of changing the access to avoid applying for permission for a new gateway across common land via a section 38 application. This is simply untrue. It would have been cheaper and possibly faster to go down the section 38 route. The Open Spaces Society had already advised the parish council that I was highly likely to meet with success with a section 38 application. Interestingly, most of the original and very vociferous objectors have not objected to this improved proposal. I hope they are satisfied that I have made a significant effort to address their concerns. 
Some of the objectors to this new proposal did not object to any of the previous applications on this site, despite having about three years in which to do so. It appears that these new people have been recruited on this occasion to make up the numbers to enable Councillor Swinglehurst to request a redirection to committee. The Parish Council came very close to supporting this proposal, but the Chairman pressed an abstaining councillor to vote, and he eventually sided with the two, only two Parish Councillors to have objected. We've not yet heard from Councillor Swinglehurst, so I mustn't second guess what she'll say, but it will beg a belief if she speaks against a proposal that was originally her own idea. I hope you will accept my improvements in the spirit in which they've been made and feel able to vote in favour. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs Bowden, can I now ask them to the councillor Swigglehurst is a board member. She has given her apologies for this meeting and has provided a written a statement which the clerk Mr. Evans will read to the meeting. Ten minutes time limit. Okay, statement on behalf of Councillor Swinglehurst as the local ward member. The committee will recall this site from the previously approved application for two dwellings. There was strong local objection to that application and there is, not surprisingly, no less strong objection to this one. Local residents believe that this development will have a negative impact on the character of the settlement that it is unacceptable in form, design, scale and location and that it will have a severe impact on the local road network, particularly in light of the application for a single dwelling close by, which to all intents and purposes means that there is a cumulative increase of three dwellings. For a great many years, Welsh News in Common has seen only minimal growth. The recently adopted NDP notes that the Common is is characterised as a place of beauty and unspoiled nature with a feeling of remoteness and tranquillity reminiscent of days gone by. Many of the objectors believe that this development will change that character forever. The parish as a whole has met the minimum housing target. Whilst it is recognised that Welsh Newton Common is a settlement considered to be appropriate for proportionate growth in the core strategy, the policy also states that proposals will be expected to demonstrate particular attention to the form, layout, character and setting of the site and its location in the settlement and or that they result in development that contributes to or is essential to the social well-being of the settlement concerned. That they result in the development of high quality sustainable schemes which are appropriate to their context and may to make a positive contribution to the surrounding environment and its landscape setting, and that they result in the delivery of the size, type, tenure, and range of housing that is required in particular settlements. It is the opinion of those local residents who object to this proposal that it fails to meet the above criteria, and because the minimum housing numbers have already been achieved in the parish, indeed exceeded, there is no reason for these policies not to carry full weight in the planning balance. Furthermore, the settlement is not included in the current draft of the revised local plan due to the complete lack of services and unsustainability. When the previous plan was adopted, there was a shop, post office and a place of work, worship. Both are now closed and therefore, whatever claim Welsh Newton Common might ever have had to be sustainable, it is no longer supported. Welsh Water have raised concerns about the availability of possible supply which shows how fragile the services are on the common. In order to make the access onto the property, it will be necessary to cross the common, which is identified as a green space in the NDP and accorded a degree of protection. Furthermore, it will require a section 38 consent under the Commons Act 2006, as noted in the report at 6.33. There is strong disagreement with the Commons officer's assertion that the current proposals do not require section 38 consent. <coughs> Excuse me. The change of entrance to the existing gateway will reduce the immediate threat to the species rich hetero that is known to be a dormouse habitat, but it is likely that domestic domestication of the area will lead to the new residents wanting to tidy the hedro, and this will have a very detrimental impact on the door, dormouse population. There is also concern about the impact on the beech trees 
if the use of the existing access is intensified. Please give due considerations to these points in your deliberations today. Thank you. Now, before I invite debate, can I just remind members, this is not about the principle of, um, of two houses on this particular site. That, was, that uh, horse has already left the stable. That the plan, planning permission has given. This is really an amendment to an existing planning permission. Right. Can I ask it? Councillor Norman. <clears throat> chair, yes, Chair, thank you. I'd like to just clarify that a little bit. Um, if this got planning permission, um, what happens to the previous planning permission? Does it fall automatically? Does it stay in place? I'd be interested to know that. Mr Banks. Thank you, Chairman. So it's essentially, the, the two permissions occupy the same site, so one or other would be implemented. It's essentially a physical impossibility for them both to okay. be implemented. So we're not going to get four? No, no, <laughs> no, you'll get two dwellings, one either this but the orientation or changes. the excellence. Okay. Correct. Thank you. <clears throat> right. right. Any other speakers? Um, also a query from me uh, of the case officer. So, um, uh, it was condition 10 of the uh, 2021 consent uh, that uh, uh, provided for uh, a minimum of 25 metres of visibility spray, which uh, would be equated to the removal of the native species hedge along the southern side. Um, and I see that uh, the equivalent condition uh, suggested in this application, condition 16, um, provides for no less than uh, 68 metres of visibility splay. Um, I mean, I recognise that it, it's a different access uh, uh, coming out onto this very, very tight bend, which has got four lanes or driveways going off it already. Um, and I just want to be assured what the impacts of having a 68 metres of visibility splay would be on the hedgerows and so on, so on. This is website. Um, with the existing gateway there now, if you already stand there, you won't be taking as much hedgerow out at all because you've already got significant visibility space on both ways. So on the um, on the block plan that was there, they they detailed the visibility space that are already sufficient there in place now. Okay, so it won't be 68 metres of head rate. shouldn't be any. It should just be trimmed back and, and kept tidy and clear. Okay, in spite, in spite of the fact that it, uh, you're bringing vehicles out onto this very tight, acute bend, you, you think that's doable? Okay. Uh, that's what's demonstrated on the block plan, um, and the local authority transport officer has no objections that these can be provided as they've been. Okay, all right, thank you. <coughs> Are there any other speakers? Sorry. I think we're going to have a look at those other slides. All right, we're going to look. Yeah, I, I think, Chairman, it might be useful if we could just look at the slide just to. Um, okay. Keep going back. That's the, that's the visibility from the gateway. I think that's a previous slide. At the gateway. Okay. So you can see there the, the gateway um, and whilst the visibility displays are required, it's fairly clear from that that uh, there'll be limited, if any, hedgerow removal required. Um, the display requirement is increased, I think, because of the nature of the, uh, the road which access is sought onto. Um, so whilst the visibility displays were less uh, with the previous permission, they're slightly greater here because we're actually onto um, part of the, the public highway. But I think that shows quite clearly that actually the visibility display, certainly in the one direction, there's no hedgerow to be removed at all. Um, and the other direction, there may be some cutting back of the, uh, of the, the existing hedgerow, but there's no requirement to remove the hedgerow at all. Okay. Thank, thank you. I assume that would mean that coppicing on one side. Yeah. Which needs to happen anyway, but that's another matter. So, Norman, did you? Could I come back? Thank you very much. Just a couple of quick comments. Uh, I, I'm clearly, we've heard we are where we are, permissions are already in place, although it is very sad in my view that a 
a common has been intruded on in this way. But I really wanted to do ask about the trees. Uh, there's a lot of concern about these two beaches. Understandably, they're very fine trees by the look of things. Um, but um, having a road going so close is going to put them at some sort of risk. So can we be sure that the root area, which I think is usually the canopy size, approximately, is protected in the both the actual um, you know, building um, the development of the site is what I'm trying to say, and the actual putting in place of the road itself. So I see that there are trees in accordance with plans and then retention of existing trees, but can we build in specifically that protection of the root area, um, uh, both while the work's being done and for the future, the road itself? Can I, can I say, I mean, beech trees are particularly important in that respect because they are, they are rooted to the to the surface, very much on the surface, and are not deep rooted. But they seem to have a capacity to survive that. I know I've got quite a number in my in my ward that survive being close to roads, etc. But when they instigate the road, I do think it's important to be sensitive to that and not to 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 deepen the foundation. Yes, thank you. I think often you see farming, yeah. um, you know, right up to the tree, completely yeah. ignoring the fact that actually the root yeah. system is. That's why I don't. Yeah. Right, Councillor Andrews. Thank you, Chairman. I say I well remember this rather contentious application of the site visit, uh, but we are where we are. Yeah, and the housing, as you say, has been given planning permission. And I also remember the debate about the hedges being uprooted. Well, this seems to have been addressed, and so they will now use an existing access. So I'm happy to move the recommendation. Is that seconded? Second. Right. Are there any other speakers? <coughs> if there are none, we have a proposal and, uh, and uh, a proposal and seconder for the recommendation as laid out in your your agenda. Can I ask those in favour, please indicate. Sorry, I, I must uh, ask if, if the officers want to make any points su summing up. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think you've uh, obviously realised that uh, there is an next staff commission and what the implications are as far as this application is concerned. So, no further comments from, no. from me. And I don't think there is a, a, a further comment from Councillor Sweetwater. Right. Those in favour? Sure. Okay. That's unanimous. unanimous. Can I now? Okay. <clears throat> thank you. Can we now move on? We've made reasonably good progress. <laughs> move on to item uh, uh, seven on the agenda. Councillor Milborn. Councillor Milborn is now joining the meeting. He had a long way to come so again, in this weather. Right. Item seven. Intersley Farm, a a forty to the west western under Penyard, Hindersley, Herefordshire. Um, Mrs. Ms. Gibbons is uh, uh, the officer uh, who makes the presentation. Perhaps you could begin your presentation. Yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the application site is shown by the red scarf um, and lies to the southeast of the market town of Ross and Wine. The site lies to the southern side of the A40 that is marked in green. This application has been referred to the planning committee because it is council owned land. Next slide, please. This application seeks for zone master's approval for the footpath link from the approved residential development site across the council and past the land to the west and onto the existing private access. The application site boundary is detailed on the slide in red. In terms of wider context, 
uh, site context, the area of photograph shows the rifle range to the southwest and the industrial estate to the west. There's also existing residential dwellings to the north of the application site. Next slide, please. The associated residential element of this proposal has both outline and reserve matters approval. Associated planning conditions have been discharged and works have been commenced on site. The outline planning permission was underpinned by a master plan as detailed on this slide and indicated a possible route for a foot or cycleway across the council owned land on the western part of the site and along private access, exiting adjacent to the fire station on the A40. Whilst the outline application detailed this link on the concept master plan, the outline permission did not require the inclusion or delivery of this route as part of the planning condition. It was always intended that a foot or cycleway be delivered through the section 106 process. Next slide, please. The reserve matters approval relating to the residential element was advanced by the developer without the inclusion of the land to the west and the pedestrian access. This was due to the option and land agreement issues. This plan is the approved layout of the reserve matters. This includes the point of connection to this foot, proposed foot and cycleway and it is broadly in line with the concept master plan that was on the previous slide. Next slide, please. The plan before you details the route of the proposed foot and cycleway. The northern section of the route just proposes the repair and resurfacing of an existing surfaced access. The southern section of the route proposes a new three metre wide foot and cycleway with a tarmac finish, with proposed grass, meadow grass with wildflowers to both sides. Beyond this corridor, the land remains as is and is in the council's control. As detailed within the, the, in the report, there is a section between the, the northern and southern element states owned by the Ministry of Defence that would also need to be crossed as part of this proposal. Next slide, please. Turning to the photographs of the northern part, which are, these are a mix of both summer and more recent uh, winter photographs, um, so you'll see the difference there. And, and show the access through the uh, along that the narrow access that goes between um, the uh, uh, dwellings to the east, and there is also a planning permission for residential properties to the west as well. The top right photograph shows the fire station with the access to its with the access to its right hand side, and this connects onto the wider footway network uh, and into the town of Russell Y and the services it uh, services it provides. The bottom three photographs are looking south, with the top right one looking back along the same length from the end of the existing track um, of, on the, uh, where the access to the MOD land is. Next slide, please. As explained in the report, the response from the Ministry of Defence raises a number of issues, including that they own the land that this proposed development must cross. This is the area hatched in red on the slide in the centre. This strip of land is the area shown on the photograph to the top left between the houses and the field boundary. The access gate that provides an access to the rifle range is shown on the photograph below. As the report makes clear, granting this reserve matters approval does not mean that the access or other rights have been agreed. This would need to be resolved separately. The photograph to the right also details the position of the range um, that lies beyond the existing tree line with just glimpsed views of the range itself with a strict direct overlooking. Officers acknowledged that land ownership and access right issues along with the objections of the MOD were largely considered as part of the outline planning permission and these were detailed in the reports and I provided the links to that committee report. The proposal is considered to be consistent with the aspirations of policy RFW2 as a core strategy and the outline plan permission and is consistent with the development plan overall. Officers consider the design approach is appropriate within the wider context and that this would provide an option to deliver connectivity from the residential development to the wider area. Conditions are suggested below and are also required to be that are also required to ensure compliance with the development plan. Thank you. <coughs> Okay. We have a unique circumstance at the moment. We have no public speakers, and the local member has sent their apologies and has sent no no statement. Um, so I invite debate.
Councillor Foxton and Councillor Andrews. Oh, Councillor Foxton. Okay. Sorry. <clears throat> Um, having a microphone to switch on. <laughs> That's really cool. sure. Right. Um, thank you, Chair. Cycle way to Ross Town crosses the entrance to the rifle range, yes? And the potential for accidents is with the herring, I think. Other cycleways cross all sorts of hazard points. Perhaps planners could have pedestrian controlled light barrier or a gateway or chain or something. Um, I think the problem might be solved in that way. Have I got Gibbons. the right idea? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Gibbons. So essentially, if this scheme was to come forward, it would be delivered as part of Section 106 scheme. So the actual technical details of how that would be delivered and designed would be dealt with at that point. So the Section 106 money that can be used for the design, the for delivery and for a crossing. So there's there's options there. It would just be the next stage of that um, that proposal, which is included in the conditions and the planning commission. There should be considerable 106 there is, uh, there is money that's available. And that money's already been received Six, as well. Yeah. Yeah. Just to share. Um, people moving into those has the development ultimately um i think they might object to noise from the rifle range and draw up a petition i think people need to be sort of aware of what's there yeah. in the first place and we had to to not alter it yeah, yeah. Thank you. That, that you know is a problem. not our concern sometimes it's, a, it's not our concern to a certain extent let the buyer beware is the um, is it to, I mean, I constantly get people objecting to farming taking place in a cottage that they bought in the middle of a, of a agricultural area, but that's another matter. Uh, Councillor Andrews. Thank, thank you. As I understand it, this is largely theoretical at the moment. And, uh, we could agree, agree to pass this planning application, but until the MOD alter their stance, it can't be implemented. Is that right? That's correct. Well, I'm happy to move the recommendation because to say it's largely theoretical at the moment. Yes. Okay. Right. <laughs> Councillor Norman and then <laughs> Councillor <laughs> Andrews. Um, thank you very much. Well, I'm happy to second it. <laughs> but uh, also just to say, um, uh, yes, it's obviously in theory at the moment, but in principle, I'm very supportive of it. Everything we can do to improve connectivity, to uh, give people the opportunity to walk and cycle, seems to be excellent and connect with the local town and services and services that are there. So yes, in principle, very much in favour and happy to support. Right, Councillor Paul. Don't, don't worry, I was just, I was just seconding. All oh, right, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Obviously, it's already done. Councillor Mill. Um, I, I, I do, I do have. A very abiding concern with this because uh, while obviously instinctively I, I very much want this to go ahead and would and support this because um, after all uh, policy RW2 land at Hillsley very specifically says that new pedestrian and cycle links from the area towards the town and nearby employment sites need to be delivered and this this offers that opportunity but if it's unimplementable, uh, and, uh, until or unless the MOD alter their stance, and I don't know how we achieve that, maybe we get uh, Jesse Norman as the uh, Minister of Transport with responsibility for active travel to talk to the, the Defence Minister, I don't know whether that would unlock it, I don't know. If it is un unimplementable, then what we're left with is essentially giving consent to the developer to build a wholly unsustainable um, suburban car dependent housing development out of town, which is not, which cannot be connected by any active travel routes. I mean, after all, the uh, vehicular route comes out onto the A40 in the national speed limit zone. So it's coming out where cars are traveling at 60 miles an hour. <coughs> and you cannot expect people to, to walk or cycle along a 60 mile an hour road. It's a good quarter of a mile before the 30 MPH starts. 
So let's be realistic here. Uh, and I, I really want to see a much more robust condition if we're giving consent, which says that uh, the active travel scheme that we're giving consent is implemented before the first occupation. Now, we, you, uh, I recognize that uh, the officer has said that um, uh, that isn't, wasn't a, a condition of the original planning consent, but condition eight actually does require that because condition eight uh, says that um, there needs to be a, a travel plan produced, but it not only says that the travel plan shall be implemented. So the travel plan, which includes for this active travel route, needs to be implemented before first occupation. Can I can I say, Councilman, I'm, I'm a little concerned about your putting the cart before the horse because until until the ministry agree what is um, their side of the bargain, then it's academic that we pass the planning application. Ms. Gibbons, do you want to? Yeah, sure. Um, so this matter has been was raised at the outline commission. It was there was no condition, and there was no um, requirement to deliver the footway. The council agreed. That we would take section 106 money to deliver that connectivity which we have received as part of, before we issued the reserve matters approval the matter came up again um, with an objection from the mod attached to that as well and we looked into what was the expectation at the time the expectation at the time was to deliver a footway and cycleway at the same time as delivering the model farm development which obviously it got, got paused so we we negotiated the position with the with the developer to change the 106 to ensure that we had the flexibility to provide a foot cycleway on either the northern side or the southern side of the A40. The developer did the feasibility work for that for us, so that we knew it was possible. And we also included in the option of delivering this one within the set from the 106 money. And we asked the developer to make this reserve matters application form for that. Um, Essentially, so that that option, if we did have the money, we were able to deliver it more quickly um, because the reserve matters approval date and the last day for making that reserve matters approval submission was within three weeks. So we, we asked them to do that as well, to build in that flexibility to ensure that that development of the 210 houses isn't, as you say, left without a sustainable route. So we now have, though it's now passed to the um, Section 116, we will then look at the delivery of one of those options and we will raise it again with the MOD. So we've, we've understood that there's a that issue was dealt with at the outline in terms of principle. We have a section 106 money, we have options and schemes and that will need to be processed and progressed in that way. So that's the, this, this scheme here can't go back and require the developer to deliver this before occupation. In terms of the travel plan, that's still ongoing. And as part of that, that is that it will be that is again their travel plan says a, a route will be delivered by the council as part of the section one six money that we've already received. So we will be progressing with that side of things. Can I come back, yep. uh, Chair, or is that? Yep, I have my theories. Um, <laughs> you say, um, uh, uh, Kelly, that uh, you've had a feasibility study done on. Uh, a, um, a, a route along the A40, as an active cover route along the A40. I mean, there, there is on the south side at the moment uh, no footpath, no cycle infrastructure, not even a verge. Uh, on the north side, there is a pavement which is two foot six inches wide. I want, I, I, I think we should be seeing a scheme, a worked up scheme, part of this application which is fully LTM 120 compliant, which demonstrates that it is deliverable. Otherwise, all we're doing is giving license to the developer to produce, as I said earlier, a car dependent scheme, which offers no realistic active travel links into the town, which after all is 
our W2 policy specifically. Land at Hildesley, I've just quoted it. But we have to beat this policy. I'm sorry to be really robust about this, but it is really important. It is really, really important. Uh, I don't know where we go with this, but I would like it's to suggest... To the, it's up to the members of the committee. OK, yeah, all right, I'll shut up at this moment. Yeah. 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 Do you want to put any further comment? Only that it's not part of this application. This application is looking at this foot and cycle way, and those other matters were dealt with at outline, yeah. and that was those matters for the actual, for the main site. Councillor Hardwick, I just want to ask a question. Because we've already received the Section 106 monies, can I take it that some of the houses have already been occupied? Uh, they were pre-commencement contributions. Okay. Yeah. Right. Are there any other speakers? Chair, can I just, sorry to yeah. labour this, but just to be absolutely clear, whatever we decide about this will not influence what's already been decided, essentially. We have, we are where we are yeah. with this either or option for sustainable travel routes. Um, but this is an addition to what's already there. <laughs> One of the schemes will need to be for the ledger. Right. Are there any other contributions to the debate? We have no recommendation. Uh, no, nobody's moved a recommendation. Yes. Oh, sorry, sorry. We've gone. Seconded. Seconded. We have a proposal for the uh, recommendation as outlined in the in the um, agenda. Can I ask those in favour, please indicate. Those against? Abstentions. Watch. Okay, that's covered. Right. Bearing in mind the next item has been um, passed over to the next next meeting, we'll move to the final <laughs> item, which hopefully will not take too long, which is the um, item number nine, Corner House Monitor, Herrick Chair. Um, the, I believe Mr. Gibbons is, oh, no, Mr. Gibbons, Mr. Banks is going to make the presentation as the officer is not here today. Um, can I ask you, there are no public speakers for this particular item. Mr. Banks. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so this application is before members um, because uh, councillor the applicant. Um, it's an application for an extension to Corner House at Monington on Y. Um, you can see the site identified there by the Red Star. Uh, can we have the next slide, please? So this slide shows uh, the site in a bit, a bit more detail. You can see it occupies a fairly generous plot um, with another detached property adjacent, but essentially an open countryside location. Uh, the road down to Monington and Y is an O3 road. Um, and there's relatively few properties served by that. Next slide, please. So these are the existing elevations, um, fairly self-explanatory. You can see that um, the property has evolved over time with some single storey extensions to the side and the rear. Uh, and as we'll see in a moment, the proposal um, seeks to remove those and to replace them um, with an alternative. Next slide, please. So some photographs of the property, uh, as I've just said, um, brick single storey extension to the side there with a bit of a lean to carport um, and some other single storey lean to extensions to the rear. So rendered property um, and again, fairly self-explanatory from the photos. Next slide, thank you. So this shows us the proposed extensions, and as you can see, um, a bit more of a sort of comprehensive arrangement as far as the extensions are concerned, knocking down those ones that we previously looked at, increasing the floor area slightly, um, but just simply really making better use um, of those extensions um, by a more sort of comprehensive arrangement. 
Um, you'll note from the report that the Parish Council have um, mentioned matters to do with um, sewage disposal, the properties served by an existing septic tank and that arrangement won't change. There's no intensification in use as far as the proposal is concerned. Um, the site is in an area of flood risk. As you'll have seen from the photos, I took those last Friday when uh, we just had some heavy rainfall and it was quite a challenge to get to the site, not necessarily down the road, but for, for other reasons. Um, but no evidence of flooding, so no issue as far as officers are concerned in that regard. Um, materials will match the existing cottage um, and you'll see that the recommendation before you is one for approval. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Can I ask members for observation? Do it, Councillor Andrews Paul. I think there's much to say, Chair. I think I'd, I'd like to propose the application as presented. Okay. Seconded. S seconded. Any other speakers? If there are none, can I ask for a, um, a vote of those in favour of the application as outlined in the agenda? I believe that has been carried unanimously. I thank you all for your attendance. Can I ask that the live stream is now closed? <laughs>